today uh, we will start talking about uh, uh, a new set of two port parameters that uh, I am not sure you have seen before and these are called the scattering parameters. All of you have no doubt uh, you know exposed to to various parameter sets uh, used to uh, characterize networks uh, namely uh, the short circuit admittance parameters and uh, what are they called? What parameter set? This is the y parameter, right? And why are they called uh, short circuit admittance parameters? The admittance because the units of the uh, are admittance and short circuit because the, the way you measure for example, y11 is nothing but Yes, what is y11? i1 by v1 when? When v2 is 0, right. So, basically you short circuit the second port and uh, you apply a voltage v1 here and this is i1. So, uh, the short circuit comes about uh, because the other port is short circuited and uh, or terminated in a short circuit and uh, uh, I 1 by V 1 is dimensions of admittance fine. And likewise you have seen uh, the Z parameter set and what are these? These are open circuit impedance parameters. And, uh, and you have seen other parameter sets, uh, uh, what, what others are you aware of? Okay, great, I mean so uh, the T parameters, the T parameters uh, they are called the, yeah, uh, chain parameters sometimes and then uh, uh, you have also seen uh, the H parameters. How many of you have heard of the H parameters uh, set? Okay, you have seen this, and then uh, you have seen uh, G parameters, right? Okay, and you can uh, come up with a whole bunch of, uh, you know, interesting but mostly useless problems on trying to convert from one set to another, right? Uh, uh, okay, given H you find G, if I, you know given H you find Y, I mean uh, all these things you have uh, done until you are blue in the face, right. Okay, now the uh, the question now is you know there are already enough, there seem to be at least you know every alphabet seems to have one parameter set, there is you know uh, there is uh, there are the A, B, C, D parameters, uh, we have missed E, F, uh, there is G, there is H, uh, there is uh, Y, Z, okay. Uh, so, now the question, the obvious question is you know why do we need one more set of parameters that describe the, the same old two port all over again. I mean clearly you know that you know if you know one set you know all the, uh, you know the rest. So, the, the, uh, the question is uh, you know, uh, you know uh, why on earth do we need a, a new parameter set uh, uh, and uh, uh, so what is the, you know I mean is it simply is it simply masochism or is it you know is there a uh, is there a, a practical use uh, use case that necess necessitates uh, a new parameter set right it turns out that uh, there is uh, uh, it's actually grounded in uh, in uh, in uh, uh, the scattering parameters are grounded in practice uh, and they satisfy basically a, a requirement and uh, to see what that requirement is i will have to kind of go back a little bit and talk about uh, uh, transmission lines, right. And uh, uh, the reason I need to talk about transmission lines is the following. So, uh, you know, 
when we basically say we are going to, uh, when we, let us say we are trying to measure y parameters in a lab, right? It is one thing to draw, you know, a two port box like this and draw a perfect short circuit at the, uh, at port 2, right? Uh, and uh, uh, quite another thing to basically uh, uh, to do the same thing in the lab because many times, you know, you not only do the theory, you also want to make measurements and prove that, you know, whatever your device or your amplifier or your system, uh, you know, has the two port parameters that you think it should have, correct? So, if you wanted to measure the y parameters, what you would have to do in principle is to basically short circuit port 2 and uh, remember that, uh, uh, you know, uh, and apply a voltage at, at port 1, okay? And uh, as far as this diagram is concerned, the voltage has to be applied right at the, right at the terminals of, of port 1. Alright, it is not, I will apply, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, V1 a mile away and then, uh, you know, hope that the same voltage will appear at, at the terminals of port 1. Likewise, the short circuit at port 2 means that the two terminals 2 and 2 prime are, you know, that short basically is, uh, you know, right at uh, the, uh, the port, right. It is not, you know, for instance, uh, you know, uh, it is not uh, uh, 2 centimeters away, it is not a foot away, it is not a mile away, alright. Uh, and that obviously uh, brings up, uh, you know, a whole new set of practical problems, right. So, let us say you are trying to measure the y parameters of a transistor, correct, okay. The transistor is this microscopic small thing which is like sitting somewhere, okay. And, uh, you know, your voltage source is this big dabba, right. Uh, uh, and your uh, whatever box that you have to measure current or whatever is another big dabba, right? And uh, so basically, uh, now the question is, uh, okay, I mean, how do I get the two terminals of this box, measurement box or the source box to this, this microscopic animal which I can see under, uh, you know, only under magnification, correct? Okay. And uh, so then the answer is, oh, you know, why are we worried? You know, have you, have you not heard of a cable? Right? So, you take, uh, you know, uh, you basically say, oh, here is my big box, the voltage source, which is some box like this, right? And uh, here is my transistor with, uh, you know, uh, the three terminals, right? Let us assume magically it is biased. And then you say, oh, well, you know, I will connect, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, a cable like this. Uh, the two conductors of the cable perhaps are like this. And then, uh, uh, you know, I will have to short circuit uh, uh, these two. So, I will connect another uh, big cable like this, right. Oh, that looks like a short circuit because, well, these two cables are short, right. But uh, as frequencies become higher and higher, the meaning of what a short circuit is and what an open circuit uh, is become more and more fuzzy as we will discuss, right. And uh, uh, you, you know, while we are at this point, we are no, we are no experts as to, you know, uh, uh, to figure out what these, these uh, uh, two long cables will do uh, to the measured y parameters. One thing we can uh, be absolutely sure is that this is definitely not the same as, these two situations are definitely not the, not the same. They would be the same if the length of the cables tended to tended to 0, but if they do not, then you know, uh, the situation is not the same, right. And we have to figure out, uh, you know, what these cables are actually doing to, uh, to our measured y parameters, right. Uh, and as it will turn out, uh, it turns out, I mean, it, it so happens that uh, these cables basically uh, can potentially uh, send the whole system into, um, into oscillation. Right, if the transistor has got sufficiently high um, uh, high gain and so on, right? When you uh, drive it with a voltage source and when you um, terminate it with um, with a short circuit, as shown here, through those long cables, right? So our first uh, uh, order of business is to understand, you know, uh, what the cable does, right? And uh, I am sure you have seen uh, uh, most of this in EM, but I am just going to quickly uh, go over uh, this stuff, right. Uh, uh, you know, a cable or, uh, a I mean, a coaxial cable or 
a parallel plate, uh, 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 you know, what do you call a system with two conductors separated by uh, some kind of dielectric, it turns out can be modeled by by a series of LC LC uh, uh, networks, right. Uh, the inductance of uh, uh, each one of them is uh, an infinitesimal inductance which is basically L times uh, uh, delta x, right. L by the way is the inductance per unit length. And likewise, every capacitor, I mean C is the capacitance per unit length. Right? And uh, well, uh, this is uh, at this point, uh, you know, an infinitely long cable. Uh, we are trying to figure out uh, what happens. And remember that uh, the uh, as we go along like this, uh, you know, this is x and therefore, the voltage at any point on uh, uh, this network is basically a function of both space and time, right. If this is x comma t, this is going to be V of x plus delta x comma t, alright. And uh, if this is uh, uh, current is also a function of uh, space and time. So, this is uh, i of x comma t, this is i of x plus delta x comma, alright. Now, what comment can we make about uh, and, and what are we supposed to do? We are, we are trying to figure out uh, uh, what equations govern the voltage and current as a function of space and time. Hmm? So, well, uh, we only know one, I mean it turns out, by the way, I am sure uh, all of you have done an EM class and uh, the equivalent circuit for this comes out from Maxwell's equation, right. Uh, so, uh, to solve this, what do we do? We simply write uh, uh, Kirchhoff's laws and uh, recognize that V of x comma t minus V of x plus delta x comma t is simply the drop across that infinitesimal inductor is nothing but is nothing but L partial derivative of I with respect to with respect to time. Pardon? Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, L. That's correct. Thank you. L did. Right? And uh, uh, similarly, I of x comma t minus I of x plus delta x comma t must be equal to C delta x times partial derivative of by does it make sense people? I am mean, just saying that you know uh, the current on the right is current in the left minus what current is lost in the capacitor, right. Now, uh, as delta x tends to 0, uh, what do you see? The left hand side basically you can write this as, well this goes this way, uh, goes to the denominator there and what do you see? The partial derivative of voltage with respect to time, with respect to space sorry is 
the negative of L times correct and likewise the partial derivative of current with respect to space is the negative of the voltage with respect to does it make sense people all right so these are uh, two first order linear coupled partial differential equations hmm? and uh, you know whenever you have two equations and two variables you know what do you do to find the solution well you eliminate one of them right so what do you do here uh, by the way what are these called I mean, you have seen this before I suspect transport equation no yes yes telegraph what telegraph telegraphers equation equations actually because there are two of them and as you can imagine I mean all these uh, uh, this kinds of analysis all became in, uh, important uh, in the early days of telegraphy where uh, you were uh, you know uh, you were sending Morse code and you know you wanted to analyze uh, how far it will go and what happens and so on right and uh, so uh, you have two way I mean you need to find V and I and therefore you have two coupled first order differential equations uh, partial differential equation uh, you would uh, uh, to find one or the other you basically eliminate the other variable 